So welcome. Um, thanks for coming. Did you both manage to find a park? Yes. Yep. Yeah. Okay, we both got one. We'll need about two hours today, so is, is that okay for you both? Okay. Um, what I want to do just first of all, I know I sort of went through this with you in the intake stage, but um, just the process. So you each have an opportunity to speak uninterrupted. Um, and, and really just that's an opportunity for you both to uh, raise the issues that you have or any concerns. Uh, from there, we'll identify what the issues are for you both, and then we'll start to negotiate on those issues one at a time to reach some agreements that you're both comfortable with. So really the aim of today is that you both heard, hopefully we reach some understandings and make some agreements that you can take away so that these issues are resolved. Okay. Does that make sense for you both? Yeah, yeah sure. Is okay with that, Jennifer? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, in terms of the principles, which I also would have mentioned in intake, I'll just go over those briefly, but uh, the process is confidential. So what you, <coughs> excuse me, what you say here remains in the room. Um, as we negotiated prior, um, Christina, your manager, said that she'd just like to see the agreements and, and from my understanding you were both comfortable with that. Yeah, is that still the case? Okay, so everything else remains here. So we will talk at the end about what you might share with colleagues when you leave, uh, but we'll have that as an issue. Um, my role is one of being impartial, so I'm not here to take sides, I'm also not here to give advice. So it's really my role is to facilitate it, keep it on track, and to really, I guess, hear from you what you both see as some solutions to the issues. So the help them process runs more smoothly. Um, I do have some uh, rules, uh, which I have popped on the, the board there, I'm not sure if you can see them. Um, but pretty much is about speaking respectfully, so no put downs, one person at a time, and that you're all here to make things work well. Mm -hmm. um, so, are you both comfortable with those yes. rules? Yeah. yeah. Is there anything else you feel we need to add to ensure that it's a constructive session? I guess the only other thing I just want to mention is that if at any stage you're feeling uncomfortable, you want to stop, you want to not go ahead with the mediation, or if you want to speak to me separately, then that's all fine. Just let us know, we can have a break. Um, so there's always that option, because it is a voluntary process. So, okay. Well, if you're all okay with that, um, then what we need to do is just get a statement from both of you about what your issues are, what your concerns are, what's been going on. Um, so we just need somebody to to start. Well, I'm happy to start. Okay, you're comfortable to start, Jennifer? Absolutely. How do you feel about that, Michael? Uh, fine. Okay, great, thank you. Just before you start, Jennifer, I just would like to say, if anything comes up for the person listening, if they can just write it down rather than interrupting, so I've just got a, a pen and paper there for you both to do that. Okay. All right, Jennifer, well, wherever you'd like to start. Um, well, I guess the place to start is the fact that we are in mediation, and uh, one of the problems, one of the issues that I'm finding with yep. Michael is the difficulty of talking to him. Uh, it, I try, I try, I, I just say things as I see them. And I've tried to talk to him about things, and he just sort of, I don't know, does this, mm -hmm. this sort of um, line up, or, you know, and, I, and he claims up, he just won't actually talk about it. So I find that really quite an issue. Okay. Um, so, one of the reasons you feel you're here for the mediation is that you're finding it difficult to talk to yes, Michael? Yes. That he will laugh or clam up if yes. you do try? Yes. Okay. And they're, they're kind of dismissive or, you know, not a nice way. Okay. So, um, so there's that. There's also, which I think is very basic, is the email address, which is actually to Michael. and. Um, I'm finding that people will uh, say, well, who are you on this project? If is Michael's project? I mean, he sort of did the tender for it, but once mm -hmm. it was accepted, I was brought on board straight away. And 
I took a quite a big pay cut to do this. It's, I'm quite passionate about this 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 um, project, okay. and I want to give something back. Yeah. And um, to be constantly addressed, you know, like care of Michael is. I just find it a little bit degrading, and okay. a bit, um, it's not really what I'm used to. Okay, so. Can I just check? So you're saying the, the email address is actually in, in Michael's yes, name? Yes, it's the... actually his name. Uh, seeing as how we're both equally in charge of this, which yes. brings me to another issue. Yes. Um, I think there should be a different email or I should have my own or something. But the other thing that, that has brought me to is that I do feel quite um, clearly that I'm actually doing more work uh, on the project than Michael. I, I think that he's somehow got comfortable here and um, he's writing a book and would like to, um, mm -hmm. but that seems to me to be more his focus and um, because he obviously has been here longer and he's known um, Christina you know, longer and they're even in like, a book club together so they obviously, see I, I don't like that, that's exactly what I was, I was talking about, that anyway. Um, I said, can I just stop for a moment? Yeah, so you're saying, when you say that... That... Sort of thing. Uh, that well, yeah, that. Okay. I find okay. that too. That's ridiculous. But, okay. I guess... I yeah. I guess... Uh, look, I, 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 I just want to... That's great. Okay. Can I, can I just make a comment here? It's difficult for people to hear things about themselves. So most people are going to have a reaction. I guess, um, as I mentioned, if there's, if there's any reactions, then it's best to write them down. And just to both of you be mindful about both what you're saying about one another and also your body language in terms of being respectful. So just a reminder, it is difficult um, for, you, for you both, um, but if we can just keep that in mind. Sure. Is that, is that okay for you? Okay, that's good. Yeah. Alright, so can I just check off her? So you're saying that you're feeling on the project that you're doing more work, mm -hmm. uh, that you mentioned uh, Michael's in writing a book, and that's maybe more of a priority, is that? Well, that's the feeling I get. It's, okay. it's like this is, is, is just the day job to support that, right? For me, it's yes. the other way around. I mean, this is really important to me. Okay. And, um, the feedback I get is that, well, that's really good to have your board because you're actually doing something. Okay. So... <clears throat> okay. I'll just say who, who actually gives you that feedback. Um, not at this stage. If you if you can write that down, Michael, you certainly I would bring that up in the negotiation. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. Well, I know it's, it's difficult to not interrupt. Um, and you also mentioned about Christina being in the same... Oh, oh yes, well. yes. Well, I mean, it's just that obviously he's been here longer and she's known him longer. And... Yeah, yeah. All right. <laughs> I'm going to hear Michael's song. Do you want to hear what Michael has to say? <laughs> we don't know. We'll put it all through, but not know. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Hi, this is Dr. Jenny Burr. Okay. You can go watch all sorts of videos on conflict resolution on YouTube if you so inclined. Um, but we're going to get back to it. What were your thoughts regarding what's happening there in that scenario? Like just some observations that you might have noticed in terms of maybe what the mediator was doing. Oh, the mediator, sorry, repeats back obviously what you say to them. Yeah, so that they clarify. It's clarify using clarifying questions, clarifying statements. So within the deduction rules, he set some rules. Setting out yeah. how it was going to happen, or you know why it was going to happen. Yeah. And then he constantly um, seeks agreement yes. that they agree to that to start. So he gets buy-in. Even yeah. if they don't want to agree, they've said they're going to agree. So that creates some kind of buy-in to the process. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Good. He doesn't take sides. Like, no. um, yeah. you know, he's, he's told the rules and he wants them to both apply to it. Yeah, like at this, point, at this point, at this point, who are you empathising with? Are you empathising with the woman or are you empathising with Michael? Who are you guys empathising with? The lady? Yeah. Yeah, of course. We all feel for the lady.
lady right now. Like, we're all like, oh my gosh, yeah, like she's got a. She's so he's, he's that's what I mean. Look at him. He's gosh, you know, I'm a bit on Michael's side. You're a bit on Michael's side. You want to hear Michael's side? Michael's, side. <laughs> Michael's body language for starters is like, oh no, he's like crosses his legs the other way. He's, he's got his arms like this. this is a, yeah, but that's, that's a natural. It is. It is natural. So for people, you know, to, to do that, they sit back and they go like this. That is exactly what happens. When hearing negative yeah. stuff about themselves. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So you know, it's a defensive. It's a defense method. Yeah. Absolutely. So that's totally appropriate. But you know, it would be good to hear Michael's side and hear, you know, like maybe, you know, that that woman's got a thing she's doing that really bugged him. I don't know. Mm. Um, <laughs> there's always two sides. There are always two sides, and that's the mediator's job is to get the two sides of the story in a calm way, mm. so that it's not a you know like if he had let the woman answer Michael's question, where do you get that feedback from? And then all of a sudden, those two are at each other, whereas he's keeping the focus on talking to the media, talking yeah. to the mediator. And I'll get your side. I'll get your side. Then we'll yeah. have some dis discussion and kind of work through. So it's just an example in case you haven't sort of seen seen it or been in that situation um, of what mediation can look like. All right. We'll keep moving. So still got a bit to get through. Um, I think last time we were talking about sort of termination of employment, mostly sort of voluntary, like, uh, you know, uh, redundant, oh, I don't know, that's redundancy, not voluntary, um, <laughs> resignation and other things. Um, so involuntary termination is for the focus for us today. It's like, okay, if it has broken down and the employer is seeking to end that employment relationship, how do they go about doing this in an appropriate sort of way? So dismissal for cause, um, we're really looking at, you know, re that justification. Why is, are they taking dismissal action? And so that is this term substantive justification. So it has to be unsatisfactory performance, or incompatibility is another grounds. So incompatibility can be that they're not compatible with the workplace or the values of the culture of the people in the workplace. That one is not commonly used because it's really hard for the employer to get to evidence it, essentially. Yeah? How do you prove that somebody's incompatible? Um, the onus is always going to be on the employer to be able to justify their decision. Um, incapacity and long-term illness. We talked about that last week. So yes, so long as they follow that process, that's okay. Breach of the duty of fidelity. So that duty of loyalty and honesty to your employer, okay? And that will be, there will be cases around that, you know, where somebody has breached trust or, or you know, broken a promise or, you know, shamed the organisation public. Those will be those things like posting on Facebook bad things about your boss. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's where you can see the sort of, that breach of that duty of fidelity. Negligence. Okay, so knowingly, you know, acting in a way that you should have known better, or you've damaged equipment, you've harmed somebody, harmed yourself, you've, you've been negligent with your actions in some way that has caused damage or harm or loss to the business. Okay. Are these all somewhere outlined? We're dismissal for cause, so we are looking at Grounds for dismissal, page 342, 343, uh, just talks about misconduct in general. Okay. It's, and we're going to focus primarily on misconduct. Um, incompetence or inability. So if somebody actually doesn't have the skills to be able to perform the task the job requirement. You know, that's different to being able to do the task but choosing not to. Okay, and that's where attitude becomes so important. Um, and that's where a performance improvement plan like the one I've sort of given you here from Employment New Zealand is you know, a key tool to sort of managing that performance. If you've identified somebody doesn't isn't performing the task, you've got to ask yourself well, can they? 
or actually can't they? If they can't do it, then it's the organisation's obligation to provide that training and support to facilitate them to be able to do it. So I want to read a case yes. in one of these and somebody in their job interview that stated yeah. that they could do the business yep. and do all of this. And then when they are employed, they find out that they can't. It's false. Yes. And yeah, they dismissed on So that. you can, yes, yeah, serious, yeah. you can actually go for summary dismissal on, a, a, you know, that sort of situation yeah. where you give them false information in the interview or selection process. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, so the difference between dismissal called summary dismissal, summary dismissal is essentially serious, for serious situations, that is instant dismissal where you don't, you know, you, st you still have to be able to prove it, you still have to go through a bit of a process, but it's not quite as long as it is sort of, um, you know, the performance management or performance improvement process you need to go through to dismiss where somebody is legitimately struggling with their job requirements. Yeah, um, yeah well, the misrepresentation, that, that comes in there and dismissal of the cause um, as well, so that is also that misrepresenting yourself when you CV. It just depends on the extent of the misrepresentation. So, you know, like that case I was talking about at the DHB, mm -hmm. you didn't have actually have the qualification. So you actually, if you, you know, if you to have, hold the job, you actually have to be a certified, you know, doctor, <laughs> counsellor, yeah. or something like teacher. A yeah, you actually <laughs> have to have it. I know you can buy them like pretty yeah. cheap on Kosan Road in Bangkok, yeah. um, <laughs> but. Uh, but if you actually don't have it, then your summary dismissal is really your only option because you actually don't have the the qualifications. You know, you've got yeah. Um, so misconduct. So is is really when they're doing things that they shouldn't be doing in the workplace, like you know, not actually answering the call, sending the calls, and playing on your phone instead, or um, any other sort of number of potential. Yeah. Poor behaviour essentially in the workplace. Um, could be, you know, instead of putting fertiliser on the tap, going to the town and having pies. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, it's kind of, yeah, I mean, it could be a range of, of things essentially. Yeah. You're looking at people knowingly, like sexual, yeah, yeah, sexual harassment, bullying. Yeah. Um, so, this is just a question I have on this conduct. Do you have, like, what would someone say? But you have things that in your employment agreement that it can. You can define some define things as serious misconduct. misconduct. Yeah. So, misconduct in general, if you look at your book, misconduct in general is any behaviour that is inconsistent with the requirements of the employment agreement. Uh, specific kinds of misconduct and their consequences do not have to be listed in an employment agreement, although they often are. If you turn over the page and look at the definition of summary of dismissal, Serious misconduct, sorry, serious misconduct. Um, the trigger for summary or instant dismissal is the employee's assessment that their action or behaviour amount to serious misconduct. But then you still have to be able to justify that the misconduct would be considered serious. And so what a lot of employers often do is specify in the employment agreement what they class as serious misconduct. Yeah? Okay. You, have, you fail a drug test, it's you know, serious misconduct, you're, that's it, it's a summary dismissal. Um, but even, this is, this is a real challenge because employers often rely on the fact that it's summary dismissal. They deem it as a serious misconduct or serious disobedience. So we can go for instant dismissal. But then when they come to investigate, they might go, actually, it wasn't serious. And even if you specify it in your employment agreement sometimes, um, then it, it, it still may not be serious. So they'll, again, like the cases we've looked at, they'll look at each case on an individual basis. So I think there is a, another case that I read that they did dismiss on that, and then when they investigated it, they said it wasn't serious. It wasn't serious, exactly. That's what yeah. happens. Um, so is it serious or is it not? So how do we decide? Have a look at activity two, misconduct versus serious misconduct. Again, like these are really brief, and it's going to depend some time on the scenario and all the information.
don't think too much on them, just go one or the other, and you just put S or M. <laughs> okay, should we go through them? Mm -hmm. Disobeying instructions. Mis misconduct. Yeah. Uh, assault of a colleague. Serious, Serious misconduct. Yeah. It's assault, it's criminal, right? Mm -hmm. Absent without authorization. Misconduct. misconduct. Yeah. Theft or misuse of employer's property. Serious. Yeah, it does depend on the like extent, like, you know. The, if I just borrowed the socket seat in the workshop, mm -hmm. there's a bike missing. Yes, there's a bike missing. <laughs> yeah. no, no, yeah. Did they take Did they take home a packet of staples, or yeah. did they steal the car from the workshop? You know, like I mean, there's a huge difference in the extent. But you don't want either in the workplace. So typically, theft or misuse is serious misconduct. Consistent problems with work performance. Misconduct. Behaving in a way that causes distress to other employees. Depends. It depends on the level of distress. Yeah, there's not enough information there. I've got it down as misconduct, but happy for you to argue. Failing to report accidents or damage. It is misconduct unless it seriously breaches that trust relationship, that duty of fidelity. If it's serious, if it's serious, then it's serious misconduct. <laughs> But I mean, you know, it's like the yeah, health and safety. Yeah, okay, so we I know. So that it's serious. I know exactly. Yeah. Health yeah. and safety is such an important issue. We all have these obligations, yeah. and so yeah, and a lot of workplaces that will be considered serious. Yeah. There's a lot more yeah. focus on that. It does depend on degree, doesn't it? But yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Obtaining a criminal conviction that affects work or reputation of the company. Serious. serious. Repeated misconduct. Serious. 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 Falsification of documents. Or Personal gain, serious. serious. But maybe that severely damages trust and confidence. Serious. serious. So you got those last four, they're pretty clear. So, I mean, the other ones were some, especially like, you know, things like disobeying instructions or consistent problems with work performance. Initially, we need to view that as sort of misconduct. If it's repeated and ongoing, it can become serious misconduct. Okay? But if, if we've got those scenarios, then we need to be following in a processes to try and address and manage those anyway. Okay. So yeah, that's involuntary sort of termination. That's when the employer is making the call, no, you have to go. The other, um, it can become unlawful termination. Okay, so if in any of those situations the employer hasn't followed a fair process, it will become sort of unjustifiable dismissal. Or, so, yeah, fair process, or if the, the reasons aren't sufficient for a dismissal, then it will be unjustifiable dismissal. So we've got um, just on um, ground thing. Um, we always keep a record of everything. Yeah. And write down every time that um, even little things that aren't really even misconduct. Yeah. So that it's you need to go back, you've got evidence on when yeah. That's a really good, you know, habit for managers to have that kind of, mm. you know, keep some kind of record for themselves of what's happening. Yeah. Um, but you, and it's good because we can bring out specific examples. So when you're looking at a performance improvement plan, you need to be able to give them specific examples of a behaviour that wasn't appropriate and when and, and you know, what you observed. However, if you just keep a written record and then whack it all on them, you know, a year down the track, then actually that's also not a fair process. Yeah. Because if 
the behaviour wasn't appropriate then, you should have dealt with it at that point, and that's what the performance improvement plan really sort of focuses on, yeah. is, okay, you know, we might, you know, we've noticed this a few, you know, a few times, but at what point do you start kicking it up a notch into we're actually now having a performance improvement plan in place? And, and the requirements for doing that, to prevent it from being unjustifiable dismissal, is that we have that fair process. Have a look at the handout, the big handout on resolving problems at work. You can read the rest of that in your own time, but I want you to look and focus on page six. This is activity three, actually. And you'll have to add a couple of boxes in the bottom of it. This outlines the actual requirements for you know, considering disciplinary action for possible misconduct or serious misconduct. So this is, this, this is the fair process that we have to have in place. So six through seven. Oh, hang on. Is that where it is? Oh no, it's on page four. Sorry. That other stuff's interesting too, but that's the process of considering disciplinary action. I want the fear process on page four. Sorry. Yes, sir. Are oh, we just putting in one of the Just put in the headings, yeah, just put in the key headings. So provision of information would be the first one there. Okay. 
So there's an onus on the employer to give information that the employer is using, you know, relying on when they're coming to making a discipline of this missile action. Oh, so you need oh, to do activity four. Oh, I'm sorry. Bob, stop showing up. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, Sorry, Bob. I'm okay, guys. <laughs> <laughs>